he can relax, or he, he can actually take you know, your phone out, or he is allowed now, <laughs> and this is something else I cannot tell because of the session will actually be interactive. So you go to your web browser, you enter uh, slider.com, and then the code stern, which will allow us to, um, which allow me to ask questions and you can answer without having to raise your hand. In this topic, this is always very embarrassing, and a lot of people don't like to do it because they could say something wrong, or people could laugh at them afterwards because it's really difficult to get things right. As a matter of fact, um, many things are not as clear cut as, as they think. So when I ask you questions, it's not about right or wrong, it's about what we think about something and learning <laughs> what other people think. When I talk about sustainability, when I got this topic from um, the Oikos conference, I immediately thought about two aspects of sustainability. One is, how sustainable is your investment? And then also a second topic, which is not really covered yet at the conference, how sustainable are these investments for your retirement? The other two things, we go first through the question of sustainability in investing, and then second, and most probably more important for you, sustain sustainability for you yourself. I would like to first ask you, if you have a low carbon footprint stock, let's assume we can measure that, and you have to make a prediction what kind of return you expect from that stock, I am asking you about an excess return. Excess means above market. It's an excess return. Do you think this is going to be a positive excess return because it's a carbon neutral or a low, has a low carbon footprint, do you think it is average or do you think that stock will have a below average return if it's carbon friendly, if it's climate friendly? At Obermott, we actually call them climate friendly stocks. We have a selection of stocks uh, that we picked where the carbon footprint is a lot lower irrespective of the industry which means you get the oil companies with lower carbon footprint than other oil companies as well. It's not just those companies that do not have a, a, a low carbon footprint. So if you have all answered, then let's go to the next question. Same uh, question, basically, for <laughs> a female-friendly stock. Actually, I, was, I, was, I, I discussed when we at Obermott, we selected... Um, uh, female-friendly stocks based on the women empowerment principles. I was told I should not call that female-friendly, I should call it family-friendly. So from now, now actually those stocks on our website are called family-friendly. Again, the same question. Do you think this is going to be above or below average or average if you invest there? Then I go a little bit faster. The next question about high governance, I see you're already answering. And now come the interesting question. Um, I'll call it beverage. Do you think it's above average or below average? And then finally, um, weapons and defense companies. And I can already tell it's interesting to see. So uh, this is the first time I'm using this. I can now show the results. Most of you people think you have average returns from a low carbon footprint. Actually, now turned to above average. <laughs> Stop <laughs> voting, because otherwise I have to change my story all the time. And it's not about you being right or wrong. It's really about learning what we think. Do we think that we have an above average return? Then the second question, does it show you the results? Yes, it does. Here, um, we have a very similar result, right? Here, it's above average. Here, it's average, we think. I stay with, actually, I can eat somewhere stop Stop the polling, but I, don't know. I can lock it, so voting locked. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the first I'm using this. Good governance, we think is above average. Then um, we go to the quest from, from uh, alcoholic beverage. We believe average, above average, and then military and uh, weapons. Here we think it's above average to return. So... Let's assume we arrived. We have now identified, if I remember that correctly, a couple of industries where you expect an above average um, return. This is uh, weapons, basically. This is average. Then um, governance is above average. That's tight. Uh, and we have um, 
again above average with climate friendly stocks. What do you think would a professional <coughs> investor do if we were right? If it's correct that we can expect an above average return from climate friendly stocks, what would the professional investor do? Yes. Exactly. What would then happen? The price would go up. So, whenever there is information in the market where we know that there is an excess return, plus or minus, we also have to assume that the market is aware of that and adjusts for that. Which basically means, no matter what, even if it's weapons or alcoholic beverages, you cannot accept, expect an above average return. It's not possible. Because you actually contradict the market. And the good news is, you can also not expect the below average return. So next time you go out there and you pick a stock that you really like, there is no reason to believe that this stock is going, is going to punish you for being nice. It's not an important insight. I think it is extremely important because it means you can actually pick stocks on the market and you will not have to worry about the returns in the future. And a lot of people think if they do something nice, if they buy an ESG fund, and actually we have a lot of you know, discussions here how they will have huge outs, out, outperformance returns in the future, and it was proven with many you know, research studies in the past, but as a matter of fact, as soon as we believe that there is an out performance return, it's not going to happen anymore. The reason is, markets are prediction markets. You're not really trading a stock really. What you're trading, trading are expectations about the future. And because you actually put down your money, researchers know prediction markets where you have to make a bet are the best possible guess that a population can have about the future. It doesn't mean you can divert from the general opinion, but you have to know that this will be a contrarian position. It cannot be, it's not mass market. This, I think, for me, relieves me from a lot of stress when I invest. It means I don't have to be smarter than the market because the market is quite smart. I don't have to be one of those people who wants to outperform the market because what I'm getting from the market is good enough. And I'm not going to get punished for picking anything wrong. Um.